here. Um, we started some months ago a series on uh, David Graeber and his uh, philosophers, because uh, 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 David never told us uh, who, where he took his ideas from. Uh, his ideas were, of course, uh, his ideas, but he uh, pointed out many times how uh, ideas are developed uh, in dialogue uh, with people and with uh, books and with uh, other people's ideas. And um, we think uh, uh, there are, I personally think uh, that David was a great philosopher. I'm sure he would have uh, loved uh, this idea, but uh, nevertheless, I believe, I strongly believe it. And because uh, his way was uh, to ask the big questions that are philosophical questions about uh, what's, uh, what's the mind, what's uh, a human being, what's language. And uh, uh, there is a tweet where he confessed which were his uh, favorite philosophers. So we decided to start uh, from uh, the five philosophers named in this tweet. And Pierce was uh, one of them. And uh, uh, so we asked uh, Federico Montanari, who's a professor at the University of uh, Modena and uh, Reggio Emilia. Uh, and uh, uh, not an expert uh, of uh, peers, uh, cor correct me if I'm mistake, mistaken, but uh, nevertheless, quite uh, quite knowledge knowledgeable about uh, peers, and uh, at the same time knows uh, David Graeber uh, quite well. So uh, he's uh, we thought uh, he's the perfect person to. Uh, give us uh, uh, an introduction about uh, peers and uh, which kind of ideas uh, can uh, uh, David have shared with uh, with him, and uh, why this interest uh, in uh, peers uh, from uh, David Graeber. So, uh, well, this was just an uh, introduction. Uh, I very <laughs> eager to listen to you, Federico. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction. Uh, I know you are very busy and this is the hardest uh, part of the, of the year for a professor. But uh, so thank you very much and um, just take the floor, please. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Simona and Vasili, I... can you hear me? Okay, see me, okay. Thank you, Simona and Vasily. I cannot see Vasily, but I hope it will arrive soon. <laughs> ah, okay. And uh, um, just one minute. Is it possible to share um, a, a PowerPoint, uh, some slides, uh, Simona? Uh, yes, of think? course. Nika should uh, make you uh, able. Able should enable you. <laughs> okay. Yes, I did just now. So you can. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, the person without a video and uh, just with a phone number could uh, please introduce uh, herself. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Savan. I'm based in London. Um, I didn't realize, uh, yeah, I called in. I didn't know whether you could talk on the Zoom call in. Um, you know, very much looking forward to this evening's um, talk. Thank you, Kevin. Um, please, Federico, go yes, ahead. Yes, I can find, sorry, the, the um, possibility of sharing uh, slides. Uh, I don't know. In basso, c'è un tasto verde, condividi schermo. Ah, so, ah, with, okay. Uh, I see it, okay. Um, okay, start. I hope uh, it works. Can you see it? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I will start. Uh, first of all, I say this, thank you. And uh, sorry, also my English is not so good. So if, uh, this is the reason I try to 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 write uh, to put uh, on the on the presentation some points and some uh, ideas. I hope useful for us, for you, for in this discussion. And uh, <clears throat> also, there is an, a partial justification. Is more or less what. Uh, uh, Simona said, my field of work is more on in socio-semiotics and semiotics. Uh, and a little, uh, okay, uh, so Peirce, as you know, is uh, one of the fathers, no? founder fathers of, uh, <clears throat> of this field of research, but more in, uh, from a philosophical point of view. And uh, my field is more in uh, socio um, uh, I say uh, in the social application of uh, semiotics. Anyway, I will try to <laughs> to provide some bridge and uh, pro propose you some bridge between uh, semiotics, social semiotics, anthropology, and uh, what we are going to discuss here, uh, here with uh, David Graeber. Hmm? And uh, um, so uh, I will find. I will start from. Uh, some points, uh, some general points that uh, probably you know, uh, but uh, it, for me it's important to, to remember in some ways. Uh, why we find the Peirce uh, in Graeber's ranking of a favorite philosophers, as, uh, as uh, Simona said, uh, uh, philosophers of reference uh, with the Whitehead, Spinoza, uh, you have discussed uh, no, uh, uh, on the Whitehead, Spinoza during the last uh, uh, seminars. Um, there are some uh, general reasons and premises for me. Peirce, generally speaking, is, uh, um, is a real out an outsider of uh, philosophy. In some what is uh, so it looks like uh, Spinoza. Uh, like Spinoza, Peirce has been uh, the subject of greater revivals in the uh, last uh, decades. Uh, Peirce, uh, in some way, is uh, considered, uh, considered as a Spinoza of the uh, 19th and uh, 20th century. Uh, but uh, um, like uh, a purse, like Spinoza, Spinoza and Peirce thinking is uh, extremely uh, rigorous, but uh, it, it, it provides us uh, um, the impression of great freedom, sort of a uh, for quoting David Graeber's anarchist of uh, thought. Uh, as you remember, um, Spinoza never, uh, sorry, <laughs> Peirce never had an academic position. Hmm? Was, uh, uh, um, so for this reason, uh, uh, is considered a sort of great anarchist of thought, not in, uh, directly in a political, uh, from a political point of view, but uh, from a general academic point of view. Hmm? And uh, <clears throat> his uh, friend, William James, I would like to, 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 uh, to quote, uh, uh, jump this, for, just for give you, provide you um, an, an example of this, uh, considered is Spurs as a genius, but not very uh, fit and uh, very um, uh, not a good uh, professor, <laughs> but uh, um, so this idea of uh, an outsider is interesting not uh, only for academic reason, uh, but also I suppose for um, uh, um, I would say um, theoretical reasons. But uh, let me start again with uh, this uh, uh, point. Um, as you know, the revival of uh, Peirce is uh, connected to the construction or reinvention of a discipline like semiotics. He takes uh, this idea from Locke. But uh, uh, so it's a new, but at the same time, ancient discipline, no? semiotics, which uh, uh, crosses and passes through all history of uh, um, uh, of the thought of thinking from the ancient Greece to uh, Locke, as you remember, Locke is the first to use in modern philosophy this uh, idea, and uh, and uh, Peirce retakes uh, um, and uh, quotes uh, uh, Locke in this uh, direction, in this uh, in this on this point. But there are um, 
some specific points, obviously. And uh, I would like to stress them. Uh, what are the place for starting in which Graeber takes up and uh, resumes and uh, discusses about uh, Peirce? I would like to quote this point. Uh, probably you, you remember, but is uh, to, to me is very touching. Is very interesting. As uh, Simona knows, we have uh, now exchanged some emails about this uh, in uh, an article of uh, 2014. Uh, David uh, Grabers uh, uh, in articles uh, the title is "What's the point if we can't have fun?" Hmm? Uh, he says, um, my friend June Sanderdom and, and I once spent a half an hour sitting in the meadows by a mountain lake watching an inchworm dangle from the top of a stalk of, of grass, twist about in every possible direction, and then leap on the next uh, stalk uh, and do the same thing. And so it proceeded in a based cir cir circle with uh, what must have been a vast uh, expenditure of energy for what seemed like absolutely not uh, no reason at all. All animal play, on that animal's place, June had the one say to me, even ants. Hmm? Uh, see what I mean? And here we find the first, uh, for me, basic and fascinating point in David, uh, David Graeber's link between uh, uh, not directly between uh, Peirce and David Graeber, but uh, between uh, the idea of play and fun and amusement. Uh, we will see how amusement uh, is uh, one of the main concepts, the neglected concept in Peirce. And uh, where does it come from uh, and why does David Graeber take, uh, take up uh, Peirce here? Hmm? is not just a problem of animals play or joke yes it's a very it, uh, as uh, david says david graeber says it's a very important ethological question but about uh, the, our idea or the proposal of david graeber of changing epistemol epistemological conception of the universe so thinking about the much more com complex and non-deterministic processes and the uh, the link between Peirce and David Graeber, as you probably remember, is Gregory Bateson. Bateson is one of the uh, most uh, quoted anthropologists and uh, more than anthropologists, uh, great uh, thinkers of uh, the last uh, century, um, um, uh, like uh, other um, no important uh, anthropologists, uh, uh, cluster or or Levi-Strauss, but this for me is the first point of connection. Uh, one of the greatest fundamental references is Bateson, but particularly about a famous model of, a very famous model, this the famous model of schismogenesis, as you remember, is a model of non-causal, non-linear mechanism, no? not only in the living, uh, world and the biolo bi biological world, but uh, also for concerning net, uh, not only natural phenomena, but uh, cultural and social phenomena. Take the famous example of uh, conflict, of a conversation, hmm? of uh, uh, conflict in family, <laughs> uh, on war, about war. We, uh, I open a parenthesis. It, it could be interesting to think, uh, perhaps someone has just uh, <laughs> discussed about this, uh, thinking about Russian and Ukrainian war in terms of schismogenesis, uh, uh, linear or non-linear or uh, symmetric or non-symmetric schismogenesis. But anyway, why this is important for uh, the link, concerning the link between Peirce and uh, Bateson? Hmm? Because uh, uh, Graeber um, um, takes up uh, um, things about uh, Peirce, uh, and uh, um, Bateson himself, uh, when he discussed and discovered hypothesizing the mechanism of schismogenesis, uh, Bateson, in particular in mind and nature, but also in the steps to ecology of mind, uh, uh, they rediscovered Peirce with a fu fundamental idea of Peirce, that is the idea of abduction. Abduction is uh, uh, sometimes abduction is. Uh, um, strictly connected to, with the idea of a hypothesis of free 
hypothesis. But anyway, let's go on in this uh, direction. Um, and uh, I repeat the point, uh, sorry, perhaps for some of you, this uh, are obvious passages, but for me it's important to reconstruct them in this in concerning this bridge. No, for Bateson, Bateson takes this concept from Peirce, and abduction is a process of thinking. For Peirce, for Peirce is a creative moment in which we have an initiation, a moment on in, in I would like to say the. Uh, like an uh, um, engine, the, uh, the, 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 the starting point, uh, um, initiating an hypothesis, a starting point before deduction and induction. Hmm? And for Bateson, in a more uh, wider way, in the abduction is similar to also to a metaphorical process. And also with, uh, it's similar to jump into a meta level meta level the ability to see new things i would like to remember also that uh, in those uh, years uh, during which uh, bateson uh, um, started with this idea so uh, resuming resuming uh, pearls uh, and uh, rethinking uh, cybernetics uh, as you remember uh, probably there was a, a vast uh, movement uh, of rethinking the idea of metaphor in uh, uh, science studies, in philosophy, thinking about the metaphor as a, a innovate, innovative process. Now let's uh, think uh, to scholar like Mary S, uh, to uh, Boyd and Kuhn. A lot of the epistemologists uh, thought um, uh, and uh, have uh, discussed the metaphorical process in this idea. But the other step, I would like to say, of Bateson is uh, to connect this idea of abduction and uh, as a metaphorical phase of a transformational phase to the idea of play and fantasy, hmm? to quote again uh, Bateson. And uh, in Perth, we find here this fundamental point. And in, is a, I would like to come back later and, uh, if. Uh, we, we have time. The idea of amusement, or uh, amusement, I'm joking with the A of anarchy here, but uh, you know, in English, amusement, uh, amusement uh, is uh, connected to this uh, uh, question, and uh, um, it uh, was a sort of neg uh, neglected concept also in, uh, uh, in Perse, concerning Perse uh, scholars and the Perse um, uh, critiques. Um, there is a, let's go on uh, on this uh, um, in this uh, uh, direction. Um, it, there is another point uh, uh, concerning David Graeber's uh, uh, thought in uh, in this uh, in this direction. In uh, another book uh, is a form of conversation. Uh, you remember, anarchy is a manner of speaking. Uh, he says that the free process of place is offset by the other, another point, that the Z principle of repetition. So, I, just for, for, point, for stressing this uh, question, uh, I anticipate the end of my <laughs> presentation. Um, also for pairs and as well as for Graeber, Freedom, I'm quoting here David Graeber, is not the only principle. There is all, always a connection between uh, freedom, that, and recurring. The idea, for instance, the idea of habit, of habitus, of stabilization in purse. So, uh, what uh, uh, I suppose uh, David Graeber discovers, have discovered in purse, is uh, this double mechanism. From one side, the potential of uh, abduction connected to the idea of play of uh, creative uh, creativeness in, uh, in Bateson from and, uh, and the other um, level is about this idea of that something uh, that in the sense of uh, stabilization hmm? in Perth we have a similar point concerning the idea of habit concerning the idea uh, according to which same, uh, 
uh, innovative process are sometimes blocked by interpreters, by interpretative laws. Hmm? And uh, but, but let's go on a little, um, this is my, I suppose my duty, I, <laughs> inside the uh, purse thought, not for being too boring, uh, too much boring, but uh, to, to stress some points. Uh, Peirce begins his work as a scientist, as very pointed very in very important uh, uh, way about out, uh, pointed out by Graeber, like uh, uh, Whitehead, for instance. No, you remember, like, like a mathematician, statistician, and a scholar of logic, and he works as a geod geodist, mm, geodesist, uh, also doing fine uh, field research mm, in the in the half of the. Uh, 19th century. Then he stops and he formulates his first phase of thought. Hmm? Uh, the first phase is more about logic hmm? and more about general redefinition of philosophy. Hmm? But the main point of this part, the first moment of uh, Peirce's philosophy, is about logic. Hmm? The invention. Mm, and uh, here, sorry, the uh, I open a parenthesis, a, a sad uh, quotation by his great friend, the great uh, philosopher and psychologist William James, uh, the, the inventor of uh, pragmatis, pragmatism. is often quoted here, the poor fellow, uh, uh, it's about the purse, seems to have no chance of getting a teaching as a lectureship. It is a pity that such a brilliant and original man as he should be cut off from a career made of a orthodox and safe man. As you know, we find some uh, no recurrent situation in uh, university. I quoted uh, the case, uh, not the example of Spinoza, but the other examples. But uh, coming back to our, this is, um, I see, is important but because you remember there is a tension between William James and uh, Peirce concerning really the invention of what is what pragma pragmatism is. Hmm? In the last years, uh, Peirce uh, renames uh, this uh, uh, way of, uh, of the, this school, I would say, I would say of uh, philosophy as a pragmaticism to differentiate uh, to the idea of pragmatism of uh, William James. But, uh, uh, beyond this, uh, and beyond the academic career, um, I, I was saying that the Peirce earliest uh, ideas emerge uh, in a, from one side concerning uh, logic, hmm? uh, the invention of a new logic, a logic of uh, propositions. He, he works on uh, uh, mathematical logic, etc. But more generally, uh, Peirce's earliest idea emerged as a, the idea of anti-dogmatism, the rejection of the, the opposition, the dualism between realism and nominalism, like dichotomy, and, uh, and this will, uh, uh, will uh, orient him to his uh, uh, effective invention, the pragmatism, not pragmatism, as a with, but the, the point that has to be stressed also concerning our discussion on Graeber, uh, at the core, at the heart of the pragmatism, there is a semiotic theory. Hmm? And uh, this semiotic theory is, uh, as I said, is uh, uh, in, reinvented the starting and the radicalizing lock. But there is another point. Is, uh, for me, it's interesting also in connection to David Graeber's uh, thought. After the second half of the uh, 19th century, there is a change because uh, Peirce uh, has formulated the basic model uh, of his uh, thought uh, with uh, the famous uh, article a new, on a new list of categories. Hmm? But uh, and in this case, we have still the we are in the his phase of searching laws of the logic of thought. But there is a change in discovering and inventing semiotics. He begins to think about no longer just as logical hmm, categories, but as sense-producing processes. This is a real 
revolution in Peirce's uh, thought. Uh, you re probably you remember some uh, from uh, university or some, <laughs> uh, some uh, j uh, these famous uh, uh, categories that, like the firstness, the secondness, the thirdness. Uh, they are um, strictly uh, connected to the idea of uh, abduction, uh, induction, and uh, deduction, but they are uh, strictly connected not only with the forms of reasoning, but I repeat the point is about uh, the idea of invention of uh, meaning, hmm? meaning invention and sense invention. Hmm? I quote here from a collected pairs, a collected papers of pairs. You find all the collected papers on a line. So it's okay. There are two thousand pages, but we can find this all this treasure online. Firstness is the mode of being which consists in its subjects being positive, positively. Sorry. Such, such as it is regardless of aught else. The, that can be, sorry for the error, can only be a possibility. The mode of being of a redness, for instance, before anything in the universe what was yet red, was, was nevertheless a positive qualitative possibility. So you, okay, we can take this quotation or just like a general um, statement from a metaphysical point of view. Some critics say that it sounds limit, like a mystical or very, um, <laughs> sounds also like a sort of a, um, very, very general theory. Hmm? But there are some points that uh, uh, conduct us in our direction of uh, anthropology and social semiotics and David Graeber's uh, David, uh, uh, ideas and uh, uh, analysis. Mm. Uh, here, for, starting from here, we arrive to the second and major phase of thought uh, of uh, uh, Peirce from the last uh, decades of the 19th century, uh, century to 20th century, century, sorry, with the formulation or formulation of a, the invention, also in this case, of a he, he will call the phaneroscopy or a true ph phenomenology. Hmm? And the uh, previous categories are transformed, no longer belong to logic, but it become the uh, uh, conception of a sort of pre-logical ideas analysis, I uh, quoting here again from Peirce, of how the world appears uh, we have a sort of, we find here a sort of anticipation of Husserl's idea, hmm? ideas. But from the point of view of, the, of an observational science. Hmm? And the, um, this is an inter interesting uh, question for David Graeber. Observational science of what? Hmm? Is it as a typical question formulated by David Graeber so also in, the, in this. Uh, uh, important books, book uh, about the kings with uh, Marshall Salins. Hmm? We are discussing uh, uh, in, about this phenomenon, but of what, uh, from which kind of point of view? Hmm? And it's about the, again, the production of sense of meaning in the world. Hmm? Simplifying the idea is, uh, as I said, uh, it, real uh, generalization of the, his view, but above, uh, above all, we find this uh, second period of his uh, thought, of his uh, path, uh, the invention of a general map and the great taxonomy of science. Hmm? Uh, probably you know something about Peirce uh, from, for two reasons. Uh, uh, first, the famous uh, three partition of icon index symbol that are the most universally uh, known, but are only the basis of this taxonomy, which uh, go, uh, these uh, uh, different categories go on to recombine with others, depending on the relations with object, with the interpreter, um, with the uh, uh, subject, etc., etc. For instance, uh, we have uh, quality science, in science, legend science, or again, Rema, DC sign, 
uh, uh, argument, but I, it's, it's not easy for us to, to show all the, <laughs> this uh, uh, real uh, uh, um, uh, categorization, be because really a, a little, a little, um, uh, I say the year a fantastic proliferation, sometimes a bit <laughs> delirious. But uh, let uh, I'm, I was thinking about the Borges, no, the famous uh, uh, no categorization uh, quoted also by Foucault, no, uh, the categorization of uh, all, all the uh, the um, entities of the universe. But there is a point here. And uh, for uh, stressing the point, I'm quoting uh, Gilles Deleuze. You remember that Deleuze in his uh, important, uh, very important uh, books on cinema has worked a lot on uh, Peirce and has uh, crossed and uh, intertwined uh, semiotic um, Persian and American semiotics with uh, um, a critical point of view about uh, European and uh, continental semiotics. But, uh, for me, it's amazing uh, reading this point. The uh, the classification of the uh, science of uh, Perse, according to Deleuze, it looks like a Mendeley table of images of uh, and the science. This is for me is a fantastic idea. In the same years in which Mendeley developed, it, no, is a table of basic elements. There was a man, a little strange man, a philosopher in a. American United States that developed a tentative of developing an enormous taxonomy, a map of all the signs, all semiosis, semiotic process in our world, not just in our mind, because he was a pragmatist. So the problem is how to analyze the, how we see, the feel, the perceive, we perceive the world. This is a main point for us, and also, I suppose, for David Graeber's uh, legacy. Hmm. Okay, there is a vertiginous uh, uh, classification, but uh, I will skip it because it's too, really too complicated, and, and uh, it's uh, useful if uh, there is a great uh, philosopher like uh, Deleuze that uh, tries, has uh, tried uh, to, 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 to develop it, to use it in cinema, no? in analysis of images, etc. Hmm? Um, uh, I would like also to remember between parentheses that, that there was another great intel, um, uh, thinker uh, and uh, poet like Pasolini. Pasolini discussed this classification against with the idea of Umberto Eco semiotics. This is interesting. There is, there is a, a debate during the 70s in Italy in which Pasolini, be, well, before Deleuze, said, okay, uh, the Peirce uh, 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 taxonomy for me is very useful for my cinema. Hmm? Against the more formalistic idea of uh, linguistic analysis and uh, continental analysis of semiology developed in, uh, in Europe. But uh, this is, is another point that uh, will is not uh, so central for our question. Uh, what are the main points concerning, uh, on the contrary, uh, David Graeber's end and the purse for me? First, the idea of relata and of relations. Hmm? Categories as we can see, we, we cannot see the uh, purse categories as uh, only logical and uh, blocked one. Categories as a sort of dynamic and processual relations. Hmm? And this is present also from the very beginning of purse thought. And I, I think that David Graeber in all, uh, I suppose, in every um, research he made, has uh, uh, taken in account and uh, have, has uh, have, um, had this reference. Hmm? This reference, the idea of a relater uh, categories as uh, are relation, are dynamical relations. Second point. Even if uh, Graeber does not have an explicit, for me, I suppose, but I think it's true, 
explicit, explicit semiotic attitude no? concerning a theory of sense, of meaning, etc. He takes from his teacher, very important, as you know, co-author Marshall Salin, hmm? uh, the reference is uh, the huge book on kings, hmm? and uh, a lot of uh, other references, for instance, Levi-Strauss, the search, the research of deep symbolic processes. Hmm? So I suppose, I think that uh, mm, uh, 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 it's an hypothesis, but uh, I, will, I will show you a quotation from David Grebers, the last one. It's more than a hypothesis. David Grebers is confronting two pairs concerning an uh, idea of what, what are these uh, uh, processes that produce uh, symbols and meanings hmm? and sense making hmm? uh, and after this slide i would like to to propose this that quotation but let me come back on uh, to uh, on another point i've just uh, uh, discussed it but is uh, strictly connected to this idea as I said about the concept of amu uh, amusement connected to the idea of uh, uh, abduction mm? there are some recent uh, papers on this uh, based on amusement uh, made by written by Elizabeth Cook an apparent uh, tension persists in Peirce's philosophy between the purpose-driven nature of inquiry, of research, the standing to achieve truth on the, in the long run, on the one hand, and on the other hand, the fact that inquiry depends upon amusement. Amusement as a free play of ideas, which is a purposeless, a sort of anarchy in the, not in the UK, but in the <laughs> philosophy in the, an in the anthropology produced by amusement, not play. Amusement in the sense of the animal uh, on the worm quoted, uh, quoted before. It, and I uh, say those, I uh, just uh, put also this consideration. It's not about intuition. Hmm? Uh, as you remember, Press is totally anti intuitionist. Hmm? Amusement is a joyful process of discovery. Um, is not uh, also a sort of mystical uh, mm, uh, root of uh, no some, uh, but is uh, really is uh, the idea of uh, mm, uh, fantasy in inside the research. Mm? Uh, another to sorry for the auto quotation, but just for <laughs> quoting another person: abduction and the origin of amusement. First, neglected argument for the reality of God, of, uh, sorry, sorry, of God. And there is a pivoting role in the person concept of amusement, a challenge and the neglected subject hmm, for person interpreters as a, product, a productive moment, moment a quasi intuition. Um, so, to take into account person, uh, mean, as I said, there is an anti intuitionism attitude. Hmm? And a form of contemplation inside, inside the research, inside the, um, inside the, inside the sorry um, uh, analysis, for instance, uh, anthropological analysis or sociological analysis. And uh, Salas points out, uh, quoting person, vacancy, a sort of vacancies. That is a reverie, a possible source for the very mechanism of abductive reference. Hmm? Uh, just the last, uh, the last one, uh, of the last two uh, slides, is first a pivot concerning this uh, point? For me, yes, for two uh, reasons. The first, as I said, uh, has just said, is about this idea of uh, uh, productive uh, mm, mechanism mm, about abduction and amusement. The other is perhaps is, uh, for, for some of you, but is uh, shared with uh, between a lot of the people who is reading reading uh, David Graeber. Also concerning last fundamental and. Uh, 
controversial point, the total overcoming and total reversal of Marxist positions. Hmm? Thanks to this, for me, uh, thanks to this interest in semiotic, semiotic and cultural processes of uh, meaning making, uh, take the example of the idea of metapersons and a lot of processes studied by, by Marshall Salins uh, and uh, um, together with uh, uh, David, but also in the uh, depth and also in the down on and everything. Um, the idea that uh, David Graeber was uh, looking for this mechanism and he was, uh, and he found, he has uh, found, uh, um, uh, the uh, purse thought. Hmm? What I'm saying, I'm quoting here uh, very rapidly uh, Graeber, Graeber uh, from the uh, paper Radical Alterity is just another way of saying reality. It's against the idea of a of brand new uh, trend about ontologies in anthropology, etc. What I'm saying is perhaps there, there are at least some cases where the practice of the fanaphody, or is a quotation about the forms of uh, magic thought, you know, in uh, uh, some cultures, or in cultures uh, studied by David Graves, or other forms of what anthropologists are used to calling magic involve causative mechanisms we simply don't yet yet understand there are, after all, plenty of alternative tradition in science, uniformly treated with violent hostility by the intellectual mainstream that speculate about such possibility. Some involve investigating ideas originally proposed by philosophers like Peirce, Whitehead, or Bergson. Hmm? But the moment one makes such ideas out of the lecture halls and uses them as the basis of the scientific experiments, one is cast amongst the flakes. No doubt many of their exponents are every um, bit the cranks and lunatic they are regularly made out to be. But what if, what if some of them were right? For me, here the, we have a great important uh, allusion to the this uh, process of um, the, uh, this research about the process of meaning making that uh, are involved also in magic in uh, in um, non uh, uh, Western cultural traditions. Mm. And last point, and I st stop here. Um, finally, uh, finally, sir, there is a, perhaps a contro last controversial point because I'm. Um, um, I'm working uh, with uh, on Deleuze and Gattari thought, like uh, a lot of people, uh, probably uh, some of you. And uh, this is interesting because there is a parallel <laughs> uh, interest. That Deleuze and Gattari, as you as said by um, uh, Graeber, discover uh, the discovery. Uh, I'm quoting here. Uh, and use a cluster, uh, no? Cluster and uh, uh, the great anthropologist and anarchist anthropology cluster about the idea of uh, um, uh, concerning no, uh, not um, non-Western cultures that block the, uh, uh, the, the, the the developing of state hmm? of. Uh, uh, also with uh, some of uh, some forms of uh, violence of uh, rituals etc hmm? but uh, from one so there are a lot of links the other link is that Deleuze and Gattari are really interested in semiotics Deleuze concerning uh, Peirce Gattari more on uh, concerning um, European semiotics but uh, uh, there are sometimes there uh, as I said, there is a bit ironical, a critical point of view of David Graeber about Deleuze, particularly in Deleuze Guattari. So I would like to uh, leave you in uh, this open <laughs> and, uh, and uh, um, controversial point. Uh, is our uh, Deleuze Guattari a possible other uh, philosopher, philosopher in the list? connected to Peirce's uh, uh, semiotic analysis or not. And I stop here, sorry if, for my English and for having saying perhaps, uh, I don't know if uh, 
uh, are not too uh, uh, I would like I would like to say that probably I have to go in deeper inside. I don't know, but I stop here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Federico. Oh, uh, it, it wasn't too long at all. Uh, it was uh, so full of insights and uh, of ideas. Uh, and thank you. Yeah, it really made me understand. Uh, some critical points on of uh, David uh, that mm. yeah it was really really useful thank you for that uh, I can comment on uh, Deleuze um, one one thing I noticed about uh, David is that he never told uh, which the sources his sources were. Um, I know very well Bakhtin, so I perceived uh, Bakhtin in uh, his, uh, his writings, but uh, he uh, talks of him uh, just uh, once uh, in possibilities and uh, uh, once in the prefer uh, introduction to his book about uh, his field research in Madagascar, lost uh, lost people, and uh, but just this introduction is uh, a manifesto. He says uh, I applied the, the dialogical uh, and, and concrete method of uh, that Bakhtin attributes uh, to Dostoevsky, um, or. Uh, at first, uh, I thought uh, uh, David didn't know Spinoza because uh, uh, a key concept of Spinoza's that is uh, uh, the pleasure of being a cause. I think uh, this should be the the translation of Conatus. Uh, is introduced uh, by David in Bullshit Jobs without uh, uh, attributing it to Spinoza. Um, and uh, I already said this in some uh, other seminar. I think uh, this uh, is uh, an, uh, also an uh, anti-authoritarian uh, take. Uh, something is uh, uh, true, is valuable because uh, it's valuable, not because uh, Spinoza or Deleuze uh, said so. And uh, while our uh, philosophical, our method as philosophers uh, tends very much to be, uh, this is true because uh, we, because uh, Deleuze or Spinoza or uh, Peirce uh, said so. Um, this is uh, uh, true for uh, uh, David's relationship to Deleuze too. Um, Deleuze used very much this uh, uh, authority trick that is uh, attributing his ideas to Locke, uh, uh, Kant, uh, or uh, other philosophers, um, somewhat distorting them. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, Deleuze was uh, quite, uh, quite snobbish, uh, very elitarian. He talked of uh, freedom, of liberation, but he's, uh, in my opinion, was still uh, um, an elitarian approach to freedom. Uh, freedom for the few that are able to get it. And uh, um, while Graeber had a, a strong uh, anti-authoritarian take uh, that, that is very important in his uh, thinking. And uh, uh, I think this is uh, the reason why he, um, while he takes many ideas from uh, Deleuze and also from uh, Tony Negri and 
from all the <laughs> philosophers, uh, he doesn't bother to tell uh, this is from uh, X, uh, this is from Y. And on the other side, uh, even if he takes ideas from uh, other authors, um, it doesn't matter where it comes from. And uh, he refuses the authority uh, trick that we, the philosophers, use uh, and abuse so much. Um, and uh, yes, his main criticism towards uh, Deleuze uh, is uh, in uh, his jokes about uh, how uh, at that epoch it was uh, German philosophers that wrote in an impossible way, while French were clear and um and this is a yeah polemism against uh, this uh, this way of uh, french philosophers um so i spent a lot lot of words about deleuze because uh, yeah it was the uh, last thing but uh and because it was easier than uh, to scroll down, I took um, many notes. Um, I was uh, very, very interested in uh, the connection with uh, Bateson. You just won another lecture about Bateson. <laughs> Be aware of it. Um, and the schismogenesis, actually, uh, this idea of schismogenesis and of uh, uh, a non-deterministic uh, uh, process of uh, schismogenesis is uh, really key in uh, well in the dawn of everything, but in uh, the whole work of uh, David's because uh, to prove that mm, yeah that there is not a deterministic process is uh, uh, the whole point in, uh, from a certain point of view. And the other, uh, yeah, the other point uh, uh, was, of course, uh, uh, sense production. Sense production is a key concept uh, in anthropology. Uh, it's uh, almost all about it. And so uh, to provide uh, the theoretical tools to interpret this sense production um, as an, and to, to interpret this sense production as an universal uh, human thing, and not only universal, because uh, uh, play in the text about uh, play is a sense production by uh, by beasts uh, and by even atoms. Uh, the, yes, also this connection between sense production and play is really very interesting for me and uh, worth uh, uh, examining deeper uh, than... So I think... Uh, <laughs> Seneca de Bou, we it it is just a start of a this of a discussion because uh, there are so many things uh, we I I need to to delve in in uh, your discussion. Uh, sorry for taking so much time. Uh, is anybody? Uh, willing to ask questions, uh, I'm trying. Okay, um, Mike, Michael, uh, please. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's a great introduction to um, uh, Pierce because I'm very, I'm fairly good with the semiotics, but I don't know all of it. The rest of this whole phenomenon, uh, this whole 
a philosophy that really kicks off pragmatism as a whole tradition. I was kind of interested in, um, uh, I, I guess maybe the comparison between Pierce's semiotics and uh, French semiotics. So Pierce, the French semiotics has this, um, it, it seems always to me to emerge from this idea of the nominal that Kant has, the, the, the nominal, and that you can go to the, you can never get to the thing in itself. And that the semiotics is always this crisis of arriving, how do we use language or something to connect to other people, right? And that may be problematized in the kind of 60s and 70s, or particularly the, even before that in the existential movement, because people have gone through this traumatic situation in Europe, and they're kind of like, oh, this, this human crisis, we can't reach there. Where, and this, at, at some level, um, something in Pierce is always connected um, to, uh, uh, is, a, is, is in some sense a participant in that. It's almost like the Aristotelian um, idea of form. Like if you see a tree, you see the form of a tree, and it's not that you are separated from the tree. You have have bit you're part of that tree, however uh, fleeting. And somehow Pierce brings that into his semiotics because, um, and um, and I wondered if you could talk about that particularly in relationship to you mentioned um, David Graeber's uh, article on radical alterity. Just another way of saying reality. I mean, obviously the word reality became very controversial, particularly in science studies because somebody who was important got to say what reality was and everybody else had to deal with their version of reality. Um, and so postmodernism kind of went and said, well, we can't use the word reality anymore. There's no kind of truth or anything like that. And David Graeber never did that. He was quite, but he never really answered, well, what's your answer to that question, this crisis that has come up in representation? How do you cross from here to knowing what reality actually is. So maybe you could comment on how Pierce might inform any types of answers or how we would think about uh, that bridging of that gap, that kind of very calm bit. Well, we're in reality, which seems to emanate from David Graeber and Pierce. We're in reality, so we don't have to worry about connecting to it. Um, sometimes we have to worry about disconnecting from it because it's all we, everything we do is, is going to be a bit of reality. So we don't have to be frightened of the loss of truth, we have to like really fight to make sure it gets protected. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, I agree with you. Very interesting points uh, you have uh, posed. I start from uh, the question about semiotics. So that is interesting from a socio-semiotic point of view, because as you said, European and continental tradition of semiology, etc., was more formalistic analysis of languages, etc., and so on. And there was when uh, there was uh, uh, some there were some discussions between, for instance, Umberto Eco in Europe, which was totally for um, uh, a Persian, uh, no, um, real near to. Um, uh, he loved uh, so much uh, Charles Sand Sanders Peirce against the European semiotics. And there, there have been for decades a sort of uh, contraposition between uh, uh, European semiotics and semiology and uh, American and uh, North American uh, Peirce uh, semiotics. Now, everything has changed in a very interesting way. Uh, be, why? Because uh, Thanks to the question about the environment, ecological crisis, um, the climate change, everybody, also in anthropology and semiotics, has started in thinking about uh, the, the world in the sense of our uh, physical world, but also using and, and uh, resuming the uh, the uh, uh, semiotical tradition from Peirce, hmm? and according to Peirce, as you said, and as uh, I tried to say, semiosis and the semiotic process are inside also uh, natural uh, natural uh, uh, phenomena. Hmm? So uh, this is interesting for me. 
uh, also from a semiotic point of view, there is an acceptance of the uh, idea, general purpose and idea of uh, purse, thanks uh, to this uh, uh, paradigmatic change. Hmm? This is the first point. So we have to, today we have a sort of mix between uh, European and continental and uh, uh, American uh, person semiotics, also concerning ethology, for instance. Take the analysis of the, um, all the recent uh, works about animals, no? about uh, zoosemiotics. Hmm? There is, a re as you know probably uh, very well, there is a recent uh, work about uh, about the trees and there are a lot of works works about forests forests and uh, trees hmm? how forests think how trees think is not in a mystical way but in a, from a semiotic and uh, i would say uh, point of view this is the first point the second one for me is uh, okay another interesting point I'm trying I've tried to say that in David Graeber, Graeber there is a, a, the, a use of a purse uh, uh, thought, like a glue, I would say, like a connection uh, uh, matter. Um, the capacity, as uh, Simona said, I suppose, um, uh, the capacity of not uh, quoting, uh, uh, no, in a... Uh, um, academical uh, way this philosopher or the other philosopher etc but uh, reconnecting uh, no Bateson thanks uh, to Peirce and Peirce thanks to Bateson for instance in direction of this uh, dynamical approach that is uh, for me very interesting David Graeber I know that there are some critical points of view and uh, controversials the first one is about uh, Marxism and uh, no, I, I quoted this point, uh, for probably is connected to what uh, Michael is uh, going to say. Uh, what about the traditional uh, the, uh, categories of uh, Marxism? Hmm? Uh, the proposal of uh, David Graeber is uh, uh, <laughs> the, of uh, not eliminate, but of a uh, uh, reversal, no? uh, using, uh, using uh, uh, also purse and uh, um, the uh, not a theory, but a practical way of uh, investigating uh, meaning processes. Hmm? This is the first point. The other point is uh, about, uh, and uh, I connect your question about uh, also to the Simona uh, question, uh, about the concrete, the militant activity of David Graeber. So, no? um, David Graeber, there are a lot of points about this, is a ethnography concerning Seattle and the global movement about Genova, etc. No, he says we have invented here not only a political movement, but a sort of a, a, we have a, um, quoted, I would say, the idea of dualistic cultures. He said we have, a, thanks to my uh, to the studies in anthropology, I can think that in uh, for instance, the Rojava movement, no, or in uh, Occupy Wall Street movement, etc. There, there was a possibility of inventing new dualistic culture, quoted and taken by traditional uh, societies. Hmm? For me, this is probably utopistic. I don't know. Unfortunately, today with the war, uh, Rojava movement, etc., is totally <laughs> in crisis because of. Uh, no, a dramatic, a terrible situation with uh, uh, Turkish uh, Russians, etc., uh, etc. Et but the idea of uh, translating thanks to some thinkers like Peirce, uh, Marshall Salins, and other uh, models coming from traditional cultures to our um, to political movements uh, is uh, very interesting mm. or interpreting them uh, as uh, with uh, by the use uh, thanks to the use of uh, categories coming from anthropology mm. okay just uh, it was just a, a further comment uh, on your comments <laughs> sorry <laughs>
Nika wrote, uh, uh, it would be so interesting to have, uh, to talk about David and Marx. Uh, uh, I totally agree. I, I'd like to organize a, a seminar. Be also, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I, I, I rethinking of it, I was, I was uh, quite upset uh, by the um, LAC seminar last year. That was uh, uh, it was all um, Marx Marxian take on uh, on David, and uh, um, in many ways uh, I thought uh, people there missed the the very point of uh, what David says, and uh, I really would like to address the criticism. Um, on, on the other side, uh, um, we have a, a new translation, no, the first translation of uh, the first four chapters of uh, Possibilities. And uh, one of those uh, chapters uh, is an essay on mode of production that is a, a, an extremely good <laughs> criticism on uh, uh, yeah the the very idea of uh, production of uh, the Marxist theory of uh, of valor uh, of value sorry and since uh, the debate about uh, value the law of value is uh, very important in contemporary Marxism uh, it would be very interesting to start from this essay to discuss the Marxist approach and uh, to value and uh, confront to confront it with uh, David's. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, I, I think uh, Michael is uh, no. uh, about to step in and say, but uh, David wrote uh, uh, the his most theoretical book is uh, on value and uh, uh, we'll have a seminar uh, a reading group on it one day uh, after the one on debt that starts uh, uh, next Thursday uh, with the first chapter and Stephen Bachelor is uh, leading it facilitating it and he promised the uh, uh, an extraordinary guest star. I don't know who, who will be. Uh, so uh, ad some advertising, uh, join us uh, in a week for the start of this uh, reading group on debt. Um, and now I lost myself. Well, Yes, uh, this uh, discussion on uh, Marxism is uh, absolutely necessary, and we we need it. Um, and uh, now I'll be quiet and let Nika say something uh, by herself. <laughs> My sound is really, I'm in a loud place, so I was better tired. Uh, but I, I would like to, I would love to hear, if it's possible, even pre, to hear even preliminary thoughts, Frederico, uh, about uh, uh, Russian Ukrainian war and uh, human genesis, if it's possible. Nika, there is a problem, I can't hear you. There is a noise, perhaps. Sorry. Uh, is it uh, you said about the uh, Russian uh, Ukrainian war? Is was that and Yeah, Nika is writing. Uh, I think she she said uh, she's interested in uh, 
uh, and you're developing the the ideas you hinted out about uh, the war and uh, schizogenesis. Yes. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry, Nika, I can I cannot hear you. So, okay, now um, there is an, some interesting point for me um, in uh, what uh, David Graeber is. Uh, was saying about war. Hmm? The first uh, point is we can find, find uh, some references in, also in his book with uh, Marshall Salins, uh, the Kings and other books. But uh, what uh, I found interesting was this idea um, ca um, uh, coming from Bateson about the schismogenesis. No? Uh, I was saying that, uh, um, as you know, uh, Bateson uses this uh, model for thinking about uh, uh, conflict uh, as well as uh, conversation, uh, com conflict also in families <laughs> between uh, husband and wife, etc. No? But also, uh, I was uh, thinking that uh, there are possibilities of uh, uh, imagine uh, um, that this uh, model can be applied also to war and conflicts on uh, political conflict or collective conflicts. And uh, according to Graeber, uh, war is uh, uh, the way in which not only of uh, a way of destroying objects, etc., but the, the, there is an idea according to which. Uh, uh, Grabe, according to which war is a, a way of uh, rebuilding uh, something. It's a very uh, paradoxical uh, idea, but it works, uh, I, sadly, <laughs> because it, also in ancient societies, also in more, most radical example, uh, examples provide, provided by Graeber and the other anthropologists, uh, like I quoted the cluster, no, and it was uh, one of the reference uh, references of uh, Graeber. A war sometimes is a way of uh, reinventing social hmm? social relationships. So it's very hard to say this today with the Ukrainian and the Russian war, but. Uh, from an anthropological, the, the question is how we can can we deal with uh, this terrible war from our point of view, uh, anthropological and political anthropological point of view. So this tool, let me say that uh, this tool of uh, schismogenesis, uh, schismogenetics uh, processes, the idea of uh, um, the, uh, demanding us what uh, this kind of war. Uh, Okay, is destroying a nation, is destroying perhaps Europe, but is re recomposing the links between uh, in internal to our cult, in internal links in our culture, in our societies, hmm? and we can see it, uh, for instance, in all the discussions. Uh, in uh, social media, for instance, no? there are a lot of opposition, a new kind of uh, uh, contrapositions, etc. So, the, perhaps the idea is that starting from David Graeber and his, uh, one of his uh, sources that is uh, based on uh, uh, quoted through a purse is how to think these uh, kinds of processes that, uh, like schismogenesis, that uh, is not uh, uh, always a, a productive process, but is a disruptive and uh, a process of uh, destruction of values, uh, of uh, meanings, etc., etc. Hmm? So, uh, just is not an answer I can understand. Is uh, there are some suggestions about our reading, uh, about our past in between Peirce and, uh, and uh, Graeber. Hmm. And just one, war, uh, one uh, more word, uh, Bateson uh, and uh, Graeber uh, with Bateson said that there are different kinds of uh, schismogenetic processes, symmetrical, asymmetrical, cumulative. Uh, take uh, the, perhaps is a, uh, is a banal way to think about it, but take 
the idea of escalation hmm? is is <laughs> from one side is a, a schismogenesis a schismogenetic process no you menace me and I will uh, take more missiles and more weapons you destroy the bridge and will destroy all your uh, towns and cities obvious perhaps but it's not uh, so obvious it's obvious from one point of view no the problem is uh, said by graber and uh, Bateson, how not only to stop uh, these uh, negative schismogenetic uh, processes but how to get uh, to transform them this is a big uh, deal for us it's all i can say it's a trivial and uh, it's not a trivial it's dramatic at the end at the same time uh, uh, terrible and uh, banal problem but uh, we uh, perhaps uh, thanks uh, to Bates on person uh, Graeber we should uh, think in terms of uh, the grammar inside these uh, uh, schismogenetic uh, processes uh, how to make explicit them what are the the actors the points of view the narrative no this is a matter of a, a semiotic analysis uh, anthropological analysis uh, too hmm? I just want to throw in uh, maybe the the role of the state in these processes, and many yeah. of them are sure. quite easily understood by imperialism. Yeah. Um, as in, state actors are like this yeah. is our power, Absolutely. this is our power. All this mm. money that comes into Ukraine to yeah. fight a war between America mm -hmm. and Russia, and we don't really want either one to win. Although many yes. people feel sure. like people having our country invaded mm -hmm. and the country being destroyed, but yeah. a lot of that. Um, idea of schismogenesis in Graeber seems to be done at an anthropological level that doesn't really look at the state or in fact it's kind of these processes of controlling other people mm -hmm. like um in northern california the schismogenesis that he talks about is um the people who leave one area because of the slavery yeah because the other area has slavery and they say we don't want to be part of that mm -hmm. or um in the Mediterranean, um, he talks about people leaving <clears throat> this very organized equality area, which is very kind of, uh, one could argue dictatorial, mm -hmm. but certainly they went off and created a sort of um, heroic culture where a few people with charismatic power would lead, cap uh, would be leaders and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just kind of curious um, about uh, like how, and, and, and of course, um, one of the things that uh, Deleuze and Guattari do is they take Clostra's idea of primitive warfare, which is basically mm -hmm. a bunch of people yes. angry, connected to their culture, their territory, fighting that that little battle. But they don't kill that many people. And he says mm -hmm. that the Deleuze and Guattari say you add the sorcerer, which if you can no. say, you know, um, it is very much about like a state leader that can mobilize Mm -hmm. So fascism mm -hmm. is a way of mobilizing yes, sure, particular sure. kind of territoriality. And mm -hmm. maybe Clostras has a more broader view than say Wilhelm Reich when he talks about mm -hmm. um, you know, like yeah. the, the specific way that it happened in, mm -hmm. in Germany. But uh, but I wonder if it, um if some of those ideas and of course David Graeber critiqued Clostras. Because he kind of, when Kloster says, look, the primitive, the, these noble savages, they have war. This mm. is a society of equality. Um, and, and David Graeber kind of went down and kind of counted it up and looked at all those various societies. Mm. And said, well, this one, yeah, okay, they had this war and they fought off this, this sort of state power, but they mm -hmm. also had oppression of women or this one had this. So he's kind of very careful about yeah, not sure. romanticizing in the way that Clostras does, and maybe Deleuze and Guattari yeah. simply set loose that romanticism sure. of the primitive I, war machine. I, I agree with you. There is a but risk. I to, Sorry. I would love to see the idea of schismogenesis in these wars as the fight against state power being mm -hmm. imposed upon people. In some yes. sense, mm -hmm. the, like the war against war, the fight of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, you look at how World mm -hmm. War II ended yes. from for sure. Germany uh, or World War One, the history of World War One ending for Germany. Yeah. And literally the troops rebelled yeah. and couldn't fight anymore. Do, it do was you a, remember a genesis the, against war. Lenin slogan, how to transform uh, imperialistic uh, war in a uh, revolutionary war. As, uh, one century ago, today is a uh, 
more difficult perhaps <laughs> but uh, now concerning your question that is uh, very important interesting again uh, there is a risk of the ide idealistic risk not to see um, uh, like a cluster or in Deleuzean uh, point of view the idea of that uh, um, uh, non western civilization are a sort of genuine uh, no anarchist uh, anarchistic uh, genuine idea of war and uh, so uh, for this reason for me um, is, is it the mot is the question uh, as i said uh, at the end of my paper uh, uh, how to uh, provide a, a further dialogue between the losing gallery and Graeber? Uh, even if uh, it's uh, said uh, David Graeber is not more here, so we could uh, develop this uh, dialogue. But uh, the idea is that from one side there is a risk of idealistic approach, on the other side there are perhaps some problems concerning, uh, this, uh, for instance, uh, what uh, Michael uh, was saying, for instance, uh, there are um, themes and issues proposed by Deleuze and Guattari to uh, the idea of territorialization, for instance, the idea of expression and content mechanisms that are not uh, taken in account in uh, David Graeber's thought. Mm, we could, uh, I don't know if it's possible to go, to go in on in this direction, but it could be interesting. And for this reason, I quoted the, the, the book The Kings with the Martian Salins because Salins, Salins sorry, comes from a, a more structuralistic tradition. No? He quoted not only, not, not really Deleuze Gattari, but for instance, a lot of Levi Strauss, but also Jean Baudrillard. <laughs> Baudrillard, that was considered a postmodernist. Is quoted by Graeber and uh, uh, Marshall Salin by saying, okay, it's interesting, for instance, uh, what uh, uh, Jean Baudrillard uh, was going to say about uh, uh, commodities and the theory of uh, commodity, of uh, values, etc. Uh, etc. Et so, uh, for me, uh, it could be a pass, a very interesting pass uh, to, uh, to put together these uh, two traditions, I would say. I don't know if anyone else who hasn't spoken wanted to throw oh, in some sorry. questions. Sorry. Or comments. Thanks. If if nobody wants to say something or uh, ask something, uh, maybe Tom or uh, Fish or uh, it, it was Kevin. Uh, no, okay. Uh, I, I don't have that much to add. I think uh, what strikes me in these discussions is uh, the parallels with other things that I that I read. So, I was reading about uh, Douglas Hofstadter's work on uh, uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. and he works on a completely different way. Um, instead of big data, he tries to mm. find small mechanisms that give a kind of sense. And uh, it struck me that when you were talking about amusement, that it was a kind of repetition that, in a sense, doesn't have a sense when it starts out. But it gives uh, well gives sense the more it repeats itself itself, so it's uh, well very striking to see these kind of uh, uh, causal or non-causal dynamical mm, yes. uh, systems. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. very interesting. Uh, no. Thank you. No, thank you to you. It's interesting the link you propose it because, uh, as you remember, Bateson when they started based on the quoting purse, <laughs> when they started to work on these points, it was the period of the first cybernetic and the theory of information, the theory of communication in the United States and not only. So there is an interesting link for about this. Um, Bateson was going on to developing a more radical idea of cybernetics, no? And, uh, but in, this, in that period, uh, all uh, the, the or com computer science, data science started in the same 
a co cultural context. Uh, this is very, uh, very fascinating. Uh, concerning data, today data analysis, there are, as you know, a lot of uh, some uh, anthropologists uh, and sociologists and semiologists uh, that work on the statute of data. Mm? Take all the school of uh, Bruno Latour, unfortunately, you know, has passed away in the, on these days. The, there are um, uh, scholars that work with Bruno Latour that take take the this tradition from uh, sociosemiotics and also anthropology, Bateson, etc., for studying how uh, big data or the data are uh, constituted from a social uh, actor network theory, not on, uh, theory, not only from a te strictly technical point of view, but a Socio, socio political point of view. This, uh, for, for no, I think is a possible further uh, link between uh, Graeber and uh, our uh, everyday no, life and situation. Totally. And um... next seminar, <laughs> no, <laughs> next, next many year, seminars, next seminar. <laughs> a lot of seminars. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking, um, well, one of the reasons why I, I felt, so to say, at home when I uh, came across uh, David uh, the first time mm -hmm. is that my, my mentor, the one who shaped my way of thinking was uh, Enrico Forni. You ah, met I remember. him, and uh, he's uh, he taught me Bachtin, Bateson, mm -hmm. uh, Václavík, cybernetics, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he worked uh, on um, on Luhmann and uh, sure, of course, and uh, he was uh, on. Um, he was working on reviving uh, philosophical anthropology, mm -hmm. and yes. um, and I, I really want to uh, build a <coughs> discussion around mm -hmm. him and David because uh, I see many connections, and what <clears throat> both of them. Uh, were uh, working around, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is uh, something I found uh, in uh, also in Marianella Sclavi. Do you know Marianella? Yes, we know. Um, she says uh, uh, she works on conflict mediation and uh, complexity, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sp speaking of war. Of, of war um what war makes to our uh, social uh, construction processes uh, is uh, between among all uh, other things to make them uh, more uh, linear mm -hmm. more uh, uh, black or white yes and uh, more uh, enemy friend or foe mm -hmm. and uh, um, Marianella that I asked Marianella to uh, give us a, a lecture in a, one of our seminars um, and she, she agreed so one day we'll have her. <coughs> um, her main point is uh, uh, we are stuck in a 19th century logic mm -hmm. of uh, black or white, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, deduction from uh, one reason, while uh, we need uh, uh, to address uh, complexity. And uh, in a complex world, uh, um, the in, in um, I was, I took the page uh, I want to refer, but I couldn't make a picture of it. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, and I cannot read while uh, showing you, so I'll mm -hmm. read it and translate at the same time. Uh, in in uh, simple systems, uh, the same thing has the same meaning, while yes. in complex system, yeah, uh, sure. the same thing has different meanings. Yeah. And so you need to address this difference and be aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, the premise, premises, the background uh, implicit is uh, known. So everybody refers to the same uh, um, background. While uh, in a complex system, uh, the, uh, you cannot give for granted yes. uh, things because... Yes. Giving for, for granted uh, is uh, uh, the source of conflict. Conflict, mm -hmm. and uh, what we give for granted in a simple system uh, helps us in communicating, while in a complex one, uh, it uh, fosters conflict. Mm -hmm. um, in a sim uh, simple system. Uh, it's uh, either I'm uh, right or uh, you are right. Mm -hmm. It's a war. It's a uh, yes or no. Um, what we need uh, is to understand uh, uh, that everybody is right uh, in his own uh, system and uh, to understand uh, where the difference come from um, and we need uh, she says uh, we need humor to understand mm -hmm. these, uh, these differences mm -hmm. um, I was uh, referring to this because uh, uh, the the main point with war is mm -hmm. that uh it simplifies complex processes and uh, in a way ossifies differences um the difference uh, by which uh, when you say burro in italian mm -hmm. you are saying butter mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when you say it in uh, spanish uh, you are saying donkey uh, is just a matter of love in a complex system, but it can be uh, the source of a conflict when uh, this love is uh, taken as an offense uh, or uh, when uh, you are already in a simplified uh, context uh, of war. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and also, as uh, David said uh, about violence and the state, uh, the state is uh, just the apotheosis of uh, simplification. Mm -hmm. It is violence is stupidity because uh, it cuts away complexity. Is uh, the the thing that allows you to uh, skip the complex negotiation and yeah. the complex uh, war interpreted interpretive work of understanding other people uh, mm -hmm. backgrounds and the reasons why it makes perfect sense uh, for them uh, uh, the thing that makes you very angry mm -hmm. uh, while yeah. if you just can't beat somebody yes. and force him uh, to yeah. do what whatever you want uh, it's very simple and very stupid so uh, i think this is my um well what's more important in war for mm -hmm. me in this moment Sorry, Tom, you raised your hand or was it a mistake? Yes, no, no, I did. Um, actually, I, I was surprised today to, to read that uh, in Belgium, they will have next week, uh, the NATO will do exercises on how to throw 
nuclear bombs. Um, this is not even state violence. This is NATO. Um, I have the impression that nobody actually can tell the NATO to stop all this. Um, although they have clear charters and things like that. But I find this very frightening. Um, yes. And this is not just the states. I mean, I can go and elect a new state. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I have every now and then the idea that I can, but this is something way beyond uh, this. I think has much more to do with grant capital. Uh, well, it's just just my thought. Uh, yeah. No. No. Okay. Michael. Uh, yeah. It was just maybe one last question on Pierce, and maybe I'm not sure if anyone would be able to remark on this, but David Graeber quite liked um, Pierre Bordeaux and Pierre Bordeaux talks a lot about habitus and from habitus, he builds a social field theory. Yes. But uh, I would say Bordeaux's field theory is quite, I mean, to me, when, that when I read it, it's quite just descriptive and it doesn't describe the actions of people. Mm -hmm. Whereas David Graeber, one of his things that he does is he kind of looks at all the actors and he says, mm -hmm. Um, well, what do they feel about it? And they, it's not like, um, you know, like when people look at uh, other like non-modern cultures, they think, oh, well, those are primitive people. They just, they, what, they must have thought this and they just always do this. And his idea was, no, mm -hmm. they were people just like us. And just like us, they might disagree with stuff. And in some sure. cases they were much better because they'd seen different circumstances. Mm -hmm. So that idea of a social field gives people particularly like I, I'm thinking of his his work where he has a, a one time of the year, uh, this the groups are hunters in a small oh. groups, and yeah. it's quite patriarchal culture. And another time of the year, they're in a very large community, mm -hmm. and it's a very different situation where there's kind of some kind of social issues there. Mm -hmm. And so then they have quite a lot of politics because they have these two mm -hmm. things to compare to. Um, and they, so that might be emergent from those social fields. But I wonder how Pierce talks about habit and experience yeah. that might help us think about how David Graeber might be th yes. using fields, maybe if he's mm -hmm. not thinking in terms of social field theory, yes. um, but like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and particularly like the when specific, like the argument about whether mm -hmm. or not specific objects have mm -hmm. a social <clears throat> reality to people that yeah. you could say emanates from the object. If mm -hmm. someone has a gun, is it just my idea that a gun could be dangerous or threatening? Mm -hmm. um, or is a gun itself emanate a possibility of, of threat? And, you know, those types of, how does Pierce talk about habit or um, of people and, and the connection of those, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of, of objects in terms of uh, how a per, there you might be able to say that's the idea is in my head but is it also mm -hmm. in the object okay no is another interesting point because in Perth we have the idea of a stabilization of an habit not a definitive habit or habitus no the habit is produced by this uh, semiotical activity no between the uh, uh, firstness secondness uh, thirdness uh, hypothesis uh, transformation etc and the, interpreter social interpreter collective interpreter with which produce an habitus habitus is a sort of stabilization of stereotypical stabilization but is a, is not just a negative uh, attitude per, perhaps sometimes habitus is the way in which we live no we live together we perceive okay i am in a bar and the habit in this bar is um, uh, staying in some way, etc. Et so this is interesting. And what you uh, were saying, uh, Michael, about the link between uh, David Graeber and the idea of habitus is very, is very interesting for me because, uh, as uh, you say, the David Graeber ins insists a lot uh, on the idea of in, in that in in a lot of cultures, uh, traditional cultures, there is a a seasonal change, no? In um, uh, in winter they are gatherer, uh, and uh, in um, summer they change, and uh, they change attitude. Hmm? 
And the, uh, in opposition, in our um, uh, culture, in modern, I don't know, Western civilization, uh, there is not this uh, seasonal changing of uh, habitus or of uh, attitudes. That, that could be interesting. And I was thinking also about uh, what we, we, you were saying about war, uh, Mika, Tom, and also Simona, about uh, the, as Simona says, say that, that uh, war is a, a simplifier's mechanism, no? um, black and white, etc. And uh, also is a simplified, simplifying a way, a schismogenesis way, no? There are, I quote here, uh, schismogenesis, a recursive process of the exchange that is not circular, circular but produces novelty and transformation. Hmm? But there are uh, simplifying mechanism, uh, mechanism in which this, uh, there is no novelty, there is a, pro a production of uh, stereotypes, etc. That, I suppose, is typical in war, in, in, in some forms of war. For instance, what we, you were going to say about NATO. Hmm? Perhaps NATO and Russia have produced and reproduced stereotypes about the Cold War, about the, uh, the traditional way of uh, contraposition. And uh, this is a trap, probably. And uh, there are no uh, political actors that have uh, uh, proposed other habits. For instance, uh, okay, take a pause. We are Europe. We have to discuss about uh, not only uh, NATO, but about invasion, but in another way, not in a uh, uh, no, uh, well uh, a posed way from a NATO point of view, or uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it could be interesting to develop this uh, question about uh, the different kinds of, uh, as you were saying, uh, war and conflict, for instance. Because, uh, as uh, say the Grabers from Cluster, there are other kinds of war, no? Uh, uh, war transforming war inside the society or like in uh, you know, in uh, uh, cultures studied by cluster, uh, uh, war blocks the the state, no, the developing of a state, etc. So it could be important to to, to go in uh, uh, further in this uh, direction, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we we are uh, we can wrap up for for now, but we'll have uh, other rounds. Uh, okay. Probably because there is so much to develop still. And uh, thanks very much. I, thank you. Thank okay. you to you. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Federico. And uh, it was really um, dense. <laughs> Lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. See you next time. See you next week. Next week. <laughs>